Tell the old story for our modern times. Find the beginning. This lovely phrase is from Homer's The Odyssey as interpreted this past year by the first woman to publish a translation in that epic poem's long history. This narrator's command to the muse, it's traditionally been translated more like, relate some part of this to me or tell me about these things. In Emily Wilson's hands in 2017, it became no less spare, but considerably more meaningful. Tell the old story for our modern times. Find the beginning. In addition to breathing new life and accessibility into an ancient story, Wilson invites reflection on the purpose of translation itself. Translating, examining our mythologies and history through a contemporary dialect, it makes us more critical thinkers. It makes us less accepting of tradition for tradition's sakes, less reliant on the way it's always been. It also leaves us less vulnerable to the fallacy that our thoughts and innovations are entirely original, that we have nothing to learn from transition, tradition. To translate, as Wilson describes it, is to think through and to tease out the values of a text, to allow the reader to see the cracks and the fissure. She explains that this process, it's not a denial or abandonment of the original, but a way to pay deep attention, especially in the moments where the original may contradict itself. So in 2018, what does it mean to translate Arlington's history, our community's values, even our foundational texts, though they're planning documents and not literary, for our modern times? Well, for example, to tell the old story of Arlington is to tell of the fight for inclusion, of defiance of massive resistance and integration of the public schools, of waves of immigrants and refugees shaping the county's culture and economy. In our current national moment, Arlingtonians have risen to affirm that history and those values again and again. And this old story, it's why housing affordability, an issue given structure and policy agendas in the 2015 Affordable Housing Master Plan, it's why that continues to be such a bedrock issue. What this community looks like and who calls it home is in part a function of its housing. And the middle class of government workers and civil rights activists and immigrants that built Arlington and that Arlington built is endangered as our home prices continue to climb. A middle-class couple in their 20s in Arlington in 2018 struggles to find a little starter home the way their grandparents could in the 1960s. Seniors find few options when they seek, neighbor, seek new homes in the very neighborhoods that they shaped and built that are less expansive and less demanding than the ones in which they raise their family. When we talk about neighborhood character, we are talking about the very important attributes of human scale, of breathing room, trees, and green space. And neighborhood character also means the characteristics of our neighbors. Last year at this time, I described my hope that our 2017 zoning ordinance amendments regarding accessory dwellings could be a springboard to a broader community discussion about these themes. Thanks to the leadership of community groups like Affordable Housing Solutions and the Lee Highway Alliance, that conversation has now begun. One concrete approach for exploration for us this year and the year ahead, it lies into another, in another principle that is woven into Arlington's old story. The idea that development tapers, that it transitions from denser or transit rich areas into single family neighborhoods. And these edges of the county can be home to mixes of forms and ownership options that support a diversity of neighbors. But to meaningfully inform this community conversation and to help us all understand the economics and the relationship between what our policies allow and the price and size of housing we get, we need further technical analysis. We need examples from other communities like ours. And we need examples from the community that is ours. A recent Where We Live column in the Washington Post about one Lee Highway neighborhood's mix of 1930s townhouses and 1960s duplexes it offered a sort of mission statement for this effort. Glebewood has a mix of housing and people at different ages and stages of life, as well as different backgrounds, their neighbors say, and they like it that way. My goal, building on and with the ideas advanced by our new colleague, Eric Gutschall, and other community leaders, is to more substantively and specifically engage in this missing middle conversation in 2018, producing maybe a few examples of what it could mean in Arlington County, the Lee Highway planning effort and the development of housing conservation district tools in the year ahead 
Both represent opportunities to explore these forms and to translate our values of inclusion into housing policy. Childcare accessibility similarly speaks to the foundational values of Arlington County. The idea that this place is a place for families, it's part of our old story, at least since the influx of veteran families in the post-war years made Arlington ground zero for the baby boom. And the value of investing in children, of breaking the cycle of intergenerational disadvantage by focusing on our youngest learners, that's been championed by leaders like Ellen Bosman and Evelyn Syfax for years. So what does it mean to translate these values, along with the more contemporary values like economic competitiveness, into action on childcare access in the year 2018? It means fully launching to the public the 2017 work of a multi-agency partnership on January 21st, 25th at 5 p.m. at Central Library. It means analyzing with parents, with providers, with neighbors, the research-based action plan that this group has developed, determining the projects and the policy changes that are likeliest to achieve our identified goals of accessibility, affordability, and quality. As that action plan proceeds, I anticipate that some long-awaited steps will be before the board soon, such as a potential re-examination of our local codes for better alignment to the Commonwealth, potential changes to increase the availability of affordable places for and decrease the barriers to entry of child care centers, as well as new partnerships to increase the supply of trained child care workers. To tell the story of Arlington as we know it is also to tell the story of Metro, which is itself to tell the story of how a community refused to settle for a fate as a pass-through from Fairfax County and Washington, D.C., and instead bound together its future with that of its neighbors to aspire towards a rapid transit system and a higher quality of life and economic development for all of us. This value was regionalism and its legacies, the founding of the Council of Governments, the creation of a Northern Virginia Transportation Commission, they provide us the tools that we need to take on the difficult but essential work of restoring and supporting the metro system in 2018. Doing so is among our most critical priorities as metro provides the backbone for our economy, our property values, and our quality of life, whether you ride the rail system or just benefit from the decreased traffic of other people taking it. And 2018 is going to be our most critical year yet for achieving a sustainable source of funding for Metro and for engaging constructively with the many reform proposals for its governance and operation. The regionalism of the 1950s and 60s, it's our map here. Arlington will be most effective in partnership with our fellow Northern Virginia jurisdictions and with Maryland in the district. Christian Dorsey's leadership on the Metro Board and the National Capital Transportation Planning Board, it will be essential to representing Arlington's interest in any reforms adopted this year and to establishing a more effective system. In collaboration with colleagues from Northern Virginia's Metro jurisdictions and from the outer jurisdictions like Prince William, Fredericksburg, and Stafford, I'll be leading legislative efforts on behalf of NVTC and the Virginia Railway Express. We have to present a common vision from the region to the General Assembly as they deliberate on dedicated transit funding in the outgoing governor's biennial budget. And every board member will play a critical role in advocating for the system's future in the region and in Richmond. Returning Metro to sound footing is a necessary but not sufficient step in turning around our commercial vacancy rate, which will continue to be a priority in 2018. The county manager and the county board and our counterparts on the school board were wrestling with anticipated budget gaps, significant in fiscal 19 and growing even larger in the out years. The only way that we get out of the box of choices that pit our priorities, a moderate tax rate, quality schools, transportation parks against one another is growth in the commercial sector. This year, we must continue aggressive pursuit of expanded and new commercial tenants in ways that are consistent with our long-held values. Innovation, sound planning, being an attractive community to the nation and the world's best and brightest. But we must resist the temptation to chase the big fish that promise jobs and headlines at the cost of our long-term tax base. None of these objectives will be without controversy. And when we tell the old story of Arlington, we forget sometimes to note that we've never been without controversy. Our tensions about how and whether our neighborhoods are changing, about how to welcome new neighbors, about how to prioritize resources, these have always been with us. 
The Arlington Way was born in the belief that we can do hard things, that we can unite private property interests to the public interest, that we can reject the expedient for the sustainable if we work through our differences of opinion together. To translate the Arlington Way for our modern times, I think we need to emphasize these big conversations and start talking more directly to each other as neighbors. To do that requires more citizen leadership of the public dialogue. I'm looking forward to working with our communications and public engagement team in 2018 as they start training more citizen facilitators. And in particular, as John Vysat and I convene our commission chairs in the first quarter of the year, we're aiming to identify commissions interested in partnering with one another to host a series of big idea roundtables that will provide constructive venues for residents to discuss the big questions about the county's future with each other. And while we focus on this big picture of public engagement, we, the county board and county government, have to redouble our efforts to nail the daily stuff. And to that end, I'm looking forward to the implementation of both new constituent correspondence practices in the county board office and to the continued rollout of the One Stop Arlington Initiative of the county manager. Both of these are designed to improve the customer service experience of those interacting with their local government in 2018. In her translator's note to the Odyssey, Emily Wilson describes her aspirations for her endeavor, hoping that the original pro poem grows inside my translation like Athena's olive tree inside the bed made by Odysseus with delicate long leaves, full grown and green, as sturdy as a pillar. I hope this for our own translation work in Arlington too, that a strong foundation interpreted for our current era will strengthen us as we grow. And in 2018, we will indeed need to be sturdy as a pillar in the face of outside forces. We were concerned about turmoil in the Trump era and we got it in 2017. Fear among our undocumented residents and mixed status families. Upheaval in the tax credit markets that finance our affordable housing projects. A paroxysm of hate 100 miles south that left us, like other Virginia cities, grieving and questioning our ability to protect each other. 2018 will offer its own concerns originating across the river. Still unknown implications of the new tax reform law. Continued deportation threats to our young people if and as DACA expires. And threatened cuts to the funding streams that our safety nets depend on. But through it all, Arlington will be made sturdier by our history and by our striving to constantly live and evolve our values. And so let us tell the old story for our modern times. To those who help build the Arlington we have today, help this generation translate your values to keep the community thriving. And to the next generation, join us in the telling, in the translation for the next half century. Find the beginning. Thank you and Happy New Year.